Are you going to heaven when you die? That's not my choice. There's, um... Is that scary, Muhammad? You don't know what's going to happen to you when you die. You're going to think about what we talked about? I am. I will. I can't help it. Tell me, do you think there's an afterlife? I do. Are you a Muslim? Yes. And you think Jesus was crucified? Well, in Islamic belief, he was crucified. Everything happened up until the time of his death. We believe that his soul was taken. And there, when it comes to Islam, nothing in the Quran is by mistake. How it's supposed to be interpreted, anyone's beliefs on that are just as valid as mine. Are you going to heaven when you die? That is not my choice. There is, um, is know, that scary, Muhammad? You don't know what's going to happen to you when you die. I feel like it's scary at first. There's a liberation that comes with like having systems in place that you do to make sure that you, you're making your best. Like, oh man, am I going to make, oh yeah, I did try my best. This is actually just time for me to enjoy the peace. You're talking about living a good life and repenting when you sin? Yeah, my hope is that if I can get my love for that supreme as pure as possible, that will be my best chance regardless of what I've done. You show your love for God by obedience to his will. Wouldn't that be right? It's like a child shows his love for his father by obedience to his father's desires. If he walks in rebellion to his father, it's an empty love. Do you know, Moses, the prophet Moses said, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul, and with all your strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. And Jesus amplified that when he gave the story of the Good Samaritan. You know the story of the Good Samaritan? I don't. I'm not well versed. Yeah, it's a, it's a man found a man who had been beaten up. All the religious people walked around him, but this man bent down, bathed his wounds, put him on his own donkey, took him to an inn or a hotel, and he said, would you look after this man? And anything he spends, I will pay you back. And Jesus said, that's what it means to love your neighbor as much as you love yourself. And we all fall short of that. Let me just give you a little short analogy. A man stood before a judge and he knew he was guilty of serious crimes. I mean, robbing a bank, shooting a guard, and the judge says, anything to say before I pass sentence? And the man said, yes, judge, I'm really sorry, and I'll never do it again. Is the judge gonna, is the judge gonna let him go just because he's sorry and he won't do it again? Any judge who's a good judge must uphold the law, and of course a criminal shouldn't do it again, and he should be sorry. That's just, that's just the given. And so, when we come before God, being sorry and saying we will not sin again doesn't mean we'll be exonerated from this courtroom on Judgment Day. So let me ask you a question, Muhammad. Do you think you're a good person? I think there's better people, uh, for sure, a thousand percent. Uh, what, what, what qualifies a good person to you? Someone who's morally perfect in thought, word, and deed. I don't think there's any good people on this earth. That's what Jesus said. He said there's none good but God. So let's have a look and see how good you are. How many lies do you think you've told in your life? Plenty. I can't count. Okay, we'll go to the Eighth Commandment now. Have you ever stolen something in your life, even if it's small? I have. That's the first thing I stole was probably in the house before I even left the house. I, don't, I haven't stolen in a long time. Now, have you ever used God's name in vain? I probably still do. I'm right now. Would you ever use your mother's name as a cuss word? I've cussed at my mother. <laughs> Say that again? I've cussed at my mother. <laughs> yeah, but would you ever use her name as a cuss word? As a cuss word? I don't think I could. I don't know how. That would be a horrible thing to do. Instead of using a filth word beginning with S to express disgust, using her name in its place. And yet that's what you've done when you've taken God's name in vain. It's called blasphemy. So serious, it's punished by death in the Old Testament. In that way too. I would say the same like I've cussed at my mother. And, and fits of, they say like in Islam when you commit sin, the reason why you do it is not because you're going against God or nothing like that. The reason why you do it is weakness. Now listen to what the prophet Jesus said. Jesus said, whoever looks upon a woman to lust for her has committed adultery already with her in his heart. Have you ever looked at a woman with lust? I can't help. I say our prophet, our prophet most of the things our prophet even preaches is on the back of Christianity because Christianity is like the first testament is, is just truth. Islam is just an extension. It's like we can't detest anything that happened in the first testament because it's just all true. 
So, Muhammad, I'm not judging you. This is for you to judge yourself. You've told me that you're a lying, thieving, blasphemous, adulterer at heart, and you have to face God on Judgment Day. If he judges you by the Ten Commandments on Judgment Day, are you going to be innocent or guilty? Guilty. That's charged. So if you're guilty on Judgment Day, will you go to heaven or hell? I don't know. Even that still is not up to me. Even if I was like, I'm the worst of humanity, I deserve to go to hell and rot. still not up to me. Well, the Bible says all liars will have their part in the lake of fire. No thief, no blasphemer, no adulterer, no person who's dishonored his mother by cussing her out will inherit the kingdom of God. So what can you do to justify yourself? How can you be made right with God? But who would be in heaven then? <laughs> the God that created all things is rich in mercy. That's what the Bible says. He's just and holy. He'll by no means clear the guilty, but he's rich in mercy. And he provided a savior. When Jesus was on the cross, do you remember his last words just before he dismissed his spirit? He said three very profound words. Do you remember what they were? Forgive them not. No, it was after that. He said, it is finished. You see, we broke God's law, the Ten Commandments, and Jesus paid the fine. That's what happened on the cross. That's why he said, it is finished. The debt has been paid. Muhammad, if you're in court and someone pays you fine, a judge can let you go even though you're guilty. He can say, Muhammad, there's a stack of speeding fines here. This is deadly serious, but someone's paid him. You're free to go. And you can do that, which is legal and right and just. And God can legally dismiss your case, forgive your sins, let you live forever, take the death sentence off you, all because Jesus suffered and died on the cross and took the punishment upon himself so you could go free. When you're talking about the person who would judge me on Judgment Day, for me to genuinely like feel you, if, if you're... For me, genuinely, like I wanna, I wanna have you know feel where you're coming from. I have to in my mind connect, like oh, he's talking about the supreme, highest top of the only one, on top, the one true, just creator of all. And if we're talking about legalities, we just immediately drop that pedestal, and now I can't be in the place where I'm thinking about the person that will judge me or the being. You know what that is. Muhammad, I say this in love, that's creating a false image of God. God is holy and righteous. He'll by no means clear the guilty. He's the judge of the earth. Think about it for a minute. He's going to punish Hitler, rapists, murderers, liars and thieves because of his justice. And I don't want you to come under his wrath on Judgment Day. You know, what I've told you is the gospel, and it's good news for Muslims. It's good news for Buddhists, Hindus. What I want to tell you is the best news you could ever hope to hear. The supreme creator of the universe that you profess to love provided a way for your sins to be forgiven so that he could let you live forever. After Jesus had suffered for the sin of the world, after he paid our fine on the cross, he then rose from the dead and defeated death. The Bible says it was not possible that death could hold him. And now if you repent of sin and trust in him, not your goodness, not in your religious works, but him alone is your savior. That's called grace. It's called trusting in God's mercy. God will forgive every sin you've ever committed and grant you everlasting life as a gift. It can't be earned, Muhammad. Doesn't matter what we do, religious works won't bribe God to forgive our sins. It comes by his mercy and his mercy alone. The Bible says grace and mercy came by Jesus Christ. So please think about what we talked about. God offers you everlasting life as a free gift. If you don't want it, you'll be damned by God and it's not his will. He takes no pleasure in the death of the wicked. You're gonna think about what we talked about I am. I will. I can't help it. Can I give you a little book called The, the Bible's Four Gospels? Yeah, you can. Muhammad, thank you for listening to me. I really appreciate it. I appreciate talking to you as well. When I go into a menswear store for the first time, I really appreciate it when an attendant says, if you're looking for jackets, our most popular items are on that rack over there, and they're on special at the moment. So, welcome to our store. Here's some of our most popular tracks, and they're on special at the moment. We call this the Starter Kit. It's made up of 100 of each tract and 50 Ten Commandment coins. These coins are really easy to give out. Just begin with a warm good morning, and then say something like, I've got a gift for you. It's a coin with the Ten Commandments on one side and the Gospel on the other. I've even tossed a handful of these onto a sidewalk among teenagers as I rode by, and you should have seen them fight to get one. This is the good person test in comic form, and who can resist reading a comic? Then there's the same test in a cute little booklet. 
And finally, our super popular million dollar bill. Just say, did you get your million? People love these. Or you could just put it down somewhere, it's sure to get picked up. All these tracks would normally retail at $38, but they're on special in the starter kit for just $29. Just go to livingwaters.com, click on the store, and then tracks.